So you, once everything went down, you were really adamant about staying on this card. Was it basically the weight cut? Was that the main thing of, of why you wanted to fight so bad? Uh, little, but then I, I prepped a lot, you know. I, dang, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I prepared hard, man. You know, I was, I was ready to fight. I, I didn't want to waste that training camp. I spend a lot of time away from my family when I'm training, too. So uh, I really didn't want to waste that. So, yeah. And then the questions uh, of, of what next, you know, like, do I take two weeks off and then start preparing for another eight-week yeah. camp? Can my body hold up through another eight-week camp? You know, there are a lot of questions that I just didn't have the answer to. And I was like, you know what, I'd rather just compete now and work if I have a chance to. What about when they came up with the name Patrick Cummins? I mean, was there any hesitance? Because in a lot of ways, man, this seems kind of like a, a no-win situation for you. Yeah, no hesitancy for me, man. I, I'm a competitor. I want to compete. If there's an opportunity to compete at something, I'm there. Just tell me when. You know, you want to play some Madden? You want to play NCAA football? Tell me where, and I'll go meet you there. And, and I'll tell you one thing. I'll beat you, and, it, and I'll be cheating to beat you, too, because I'm trying to win. So I'm a competitor, man. You know, I any opportunity I get to compete. Plus, you know, I wrestled my entire life. You know, I, some, you don't know who you're wrestling in the next round. So uh, for me, it's an opportunity to compete. That's what I'm here to do. And is that the biggest upside for you? Is just a chance to get in there? Well, my makeup's coming off. But uh, not only a chance to get in the cage, but um, my first time down at 205, I'll get to compete at the weight, something that I, uh, you know, I, I was going to have to do against a former champion in my first time. So I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a, a glass half full guy. You know, I want to look at things on the bright side. So where, whereas. It may seem like, oh, this is nothing to gain for him. For me, it's like, well, I'm not fighting Rashad Evans. You know what I mean? I mean, honestly, my first time down at 205, I'm not fighting a guy that's been in the top five for the last seven years. I'm fighting a guy uh, that's just getting here. This guy doesn't know what he's in for. You know, he doesn't know. He, does, he hasn't done this. He's, you know, he hasn't made this. He hasn't danced his dance before. And, uh, it, you know, he'll, it's, 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 it's consuming, and it, it overtakes you if you're not used to it. And Sarah McMahon had a the uh, title picture. There was one point where people thought when you moved to 205 that you would immediately fight John. Now, you know, John's going to fight Glover. Looks like a rematch if he wins that against Alexander. So you're like over a year off. I mean, you know, it would seem to me. It, Things it, change fast. I mean, I believe a win over Rashad Evans would have put me in the contention. I could have asked for anything. I mean, I just beat Rashad Evans. That would have been three UFC champions on my resume. Win over Patrick Cummins doesn't have that pop, so I understand that there's 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 work to be done, and, and I'm I'll be there to do it. But things change fast in the sport. Things change fast in this organization, so I just got to stay trained and stay healthy and ready to go. And but again, you know, as, as I always say, this all means nothing if I don't take care of business on Saturday. I lose on Saturday, and then why would anybody want to give me a title shot? Sarah McMahon had said something to the effect after the interview that you had with Patrick on uh, Fox Sports 1 that uh, she had, he had poked the bear and that was a bad idea. What was uh, some of your response to that interview and some of the things that he had said leading up to this fight? Well, I mean, for Sarah, thank you, because she understood. You know, she'd been through it. She went through it. She had to, she was the, uh, the, uh, she was the person in the middle. They call it shark tank when that guy's are rotating. She went through the whole grind that I did, and, and uh, so she understood. So to see her come to my defense was awesome. Um, but with Patrick, it's like it's like uh, when, when I first heard we were going to fight, I, you know, I was kind of excited for him. I was like, okay, this is a guy that I knew from back then, and he's finally getting his chance in the UFC. We're going to just go out there and compete against each other, you know. And, and uh, then he started talking. And then you guys continued to put microphones in front of him, and he hasn't stopped talking since. So now it's not, well, good for little Patrick. Now it's like... I'm going to beat Patrick's ass. Aren't you glad he's still in the fight, though? Yes, I am. Yeah. He's done a great job of that. He's built interest, but he didn't do that alone. I had to get on Fox Sports yeah. 1 and yell at him, too. Did he take it too far? <laughs> did, he legitimately, uh, did he legitimately take it too far? with the, Well, the... there's just certain things that... Back then, there were a lot of things going on in my life, and he knew that. So that's why I think that more than anything, those things should have stayed in the wrestling room, even though they always do anyways. But you know what, man? He, 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 you know, he's doing what he has to do to, 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 to I mean, I really don't know what he's doing. Because, I mean, honestly, it's like, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm ready to fight Rashad Evans. Rashad Evans is a boxer wrestler. Patrick Cummins is a boxer wrestler. Rashad has been the standard for that style of fighting in the UFC for a long time. Nothing had to change for me. He's going into a fight on 10 days notice against a guy that's at prepared, a guy that's peaked. 
and he's still talking. A yeah, but he'll talk more and more. You guys keep putting microphones in front of him. I tell you, he'll give you some gold. Do you think that there's any risk that you might be underestimating him? No chance, because I prepared for Rashad Evans. If I didn't prepare so thoroughly for the guy I was fighting, then maybe I would lose. You know, maybe I wouldn't be as sharp. But guess what? I can go in there, and, and because I've trained and I've been so thorough, you, your body goes on autopilot. It's trained to do what it's supposed to do on Saturday night, regardless of who's standing across the cage from you. So I respect Patrick as a, as a competitor. I know what he did. This guy overcame adversity. He, he didn't even place in the state tournament in high school. By the time he's done with college, he's a two-time All-American NCAA finalist. That says something. You see the guy doing gymnastics. He's doing flips. How many of us big guys can do that? So he's got some real ability, and he's a very dangerous guy because he's hungry. But again, I was very thorough in my preparation, and uh, I think that's going to carry me in this fight. Do you that's admire him for taking the fight? Today. I do. I do admire him for taking the fight. I think he's a. Uh, I appreciate him for taking the fight because otherwise I wouldn't have anyone to fight. Uh, yeah, I just think that it's it's a, it's an uphill battle. You know, I somebody told me. Uh, well, Kane came to the UFC with three fights. He did, but he didn't fight Frank Mir in his first fight in the UFC. Weidman was 5-0, and but he didn't fight uh, Anderson Silva. Or I'm not even calling myself Anderson Silva. Just somebody around the top of the division uh, in his first time out. So there's a difference. Stan, when's the last time you weighed what you weighed today? 2001. 2001 was the last time. Well, at 206. Right now, I'm a little bit heavier, but last time I weighed what I weigh now is uh, 2008. And at this point, what I weigh now, I felt like I was on my deathbed because I was cutting weight so wrong. I feel hit. great. I mean, I can go fight today. I can make weight today. I can make weight tomorrow if I need to. And with it, you know, I mean, a lot of us need to have lifestyle changes. But, you know, Dana talked about you, you know, barbecuing when you were training before and all yeah. that. Are, are you going to incorporate this and make a lifestyle change where you don't get that kind of, you know, food yes. and that type of thing? Yes, I am. But I will be honest with you guys. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. There is a barbecue plan. <laughs> there is a barbecue plan and a Popeye's run in the future. Guys, I'm going to tell you one thing. I heard I wasn't fighting on Wednesday, and I'm all sad. The only thing that could ever make a Louisiana boy feel better is Popeyes. So I had some, and it freaked out the next day. It was bad. It was horrible. I freaked out completely. Dude, I had four pieces of chicken and Cajun rice. It was so good. I was, like, hurting. I was, like, laying on the ground hurting. I was like, oh, this is so bad because I hadn't eaten anything like that in so long. It's, like, so bad. How could it taste so good but be so bad? So I'm just sitting there like, oh, my God, my stomach's killing me. Like, it's hurting me. But then I'm like, but it feels so good. And then, then, then Dana called me the next day and said I was fighting. So then I'm sitting there like this, you know. You ever got bad news and you're like, oh, my God. I'm just kind of doing this. So then I have to call Tyson, who's doing my nutrition. And he's like, what did you do? <laughs> so I'm like, bro, I kind of I broke a little bit. He's like, what did you do? Do I eat Popeye's? So he's mad, right? But he's trying to keep it together. So then he's all, well, we, you know, we just got to get back on it. And because you had so much Popeyes, we got to flush all that bad stuff out of your system. So he made me drink three gallons of water to flush it. It was horrible. I was in the bathroom every 10 minutes. But it got it right out of him, and I was right back on track. So, yes, there is a barbecue plan, and there is a Popeyes run in the near future, probably tomorrow or, or Sunday. And then, uh, yeah, I'm going to continue to eat like this during the week. And on the weekends, I'll let loose. How long ago was the Popeye's breakdown? Dude, that was last Wednesday. Last Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> so literally you got the news and you drove straight to the I got the news. <laughs> like I got yourself. the news. I got the news. I'm very sad and crying. And I'm all, as I walk in the Popeye's, because I don't want to see him see him cry. I'm all like, wiping off the tears. And they're like, can we take your order? And I'm like, yeah, give me some chicken. Like, give me some chicken. Like, I feel bad. Like, you know, like, I'm not supposed to be here, but so am I crying because I, I didn't get the fight, or am I crying because I took my ass to Popeyes? Both. You know, it's bad too because people say San Jose, it has no drive through. Wow. So the lady's like, wait a minute, didn't you just lose your fight? I'm like, uh, just give my chicken and leave me alone. I'm like, just give me the chicken. Don't talk to me. You know, I'm like, don't look at me. You know, don't look at me. I'm disgusted. <laughs> training with Patrick all those years ago were you guys actually friends or was he just a guy that came into the wrestling you know what he was actually yeah he was I, I would consider him a friend you know there's something that ties guys together in the wrestling community when you spend us I mean he spent three and a half months with me on a day-to-day -day basis preparing because uh, he was Karen McCoy's main training partner so uh yeah I would have considered him a friend he did a lot to help me he prepared helped to prepare me and and uh yeah he was there I mean 
Yeah, he, I would have considered him. I would consider him a friend. I would have, or at least until after. I don't know what's going to happen after Saturday night, though. I really don't. Have you guys talked at all aside Not at from all. the Fox Sports? Thing? Not at all. I haven't spoken to him. I, I, I don't want to speak to him. I don't really want to see him until we we see each other at the fight. When was the last time you spoke to him before this? Last time I talked to Pat. No, Fox Sports Live. Before the Fox. Uh, to be about 2008, five years. So, I mean, you would think friendships suffer with time, you know, but but it's like Mark Munoz and I barely ever talk, and I still consider him a friend. You know, there's something that ties us together, you know, so uh, it's just different now. We're, we're enemies. We have you to fight. You talked to Rashad? I have since the fight. Yes, I did. Uh, Rashad and I are friends. We talk quite often. Uh, I called him to tell him that I, ho I hope he was doing okay. And then he texted me and, and, and uh, said he was sorry for having to pull out of the fight. Didn't want to do that. He knew I, I made a lot of sacrifices and, and everything. And, and you know what, man? I, I, uh, I, uh, I told him don't apologize because you can't control injury. You know, but that's him. And then Chell Sonnen. I, I, I really appreciate Chell Sonnen because he understands too. Look what this guy had to – and he was going to go in there and fight me. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like we have a we have a – this group we have at uh, at Fox Sports is, is, is it's a tight knit group. You were pretty respectful. Patrick was an injury replacement on this card, not fighting you, and we were asking I'd you be about him. For him. Well, and, and what would you say his future in the UFC would? He's going to be very good. He's going to be very good. He has all the tools to be very good. He's a good wrestler. He's he's in great shape. He goes goes so hard, man. That's what those wrestlers do. He's a big guy for the weight division. I think he will present a lot of problems for a lot of people down the line. I really do. But you, like you said, you were very respectful about what he said earlier, his kind of trash talk. But at the end of the day, you think it was a cheap shot. Uh, I mean, I mean, I guess you got to get your foot in the door somehow, huh? I mean, that's that's kind of my that's kind of my assessment of it. You got to get your foot in the door it's, uh, some way somehow. Would I have preferred him to do it in a different manner? Yes, but you know what, man? You know, interest is in the fight. People actually think this is this is like Rocky. It's not like Rocky, boys. It's not like Rocky. I am not underestimating this guy. I know that I have a fight on my hands, and because of that, I'm so well prepared, mentally, physically. It won't. It won't. It's gonna. I mean, I'm gonna really just kind of run him out of the cage. Is part of you relieved that you're not fighting Rashad? I know that divisionally it makes sense to beat him, but you know there's the whole friend thing. Maybe you don't have to fight him. Maybe not for a while. I don't know. Did, did the part of your brain? There was. There was. I mean, initially it was like, man, we're we're done with this. We were gonna be done fighting each other. We're gonna be done we're with done it. With. But then it was like, well, it's gonna get pushed back for two months. So now we gotta go through two months of preparing to fight a guy that I really do like. To now it's like, um, well, I gotta fight Patrick. You know, I haven't really thought about fighting Rashad. Uh, since that fight got scrapped, and then now I hear he's out for a while, so I'm, yes, I'm not gonna months. wait. I'm not gonna wait. I, I want to fight again when I'm done. I mean, if I get through this one like I anticipate doing, I wanna, uh, I wanna fight again. I wanna fight soon so that I can continue to move towards fighting for a championship. Was there any information to be gleaned from watching Patrick's other pro fights? Didn't watch him. I didn't watch him. Okay. Because I want to make him the biggest, meanest, toughest guy that that I ever stepped in the cage with. My idea of who Pat Cummins is going into that cage is Kane, John, Anderson, and everybody compared together. Weidman, they're all Patrick Cummins because I want to make him the biggest, most savage animal that you've ever seen. So, no, I didn't watch his fights. I don't want to see, I don't want to know how he fights. I want him to be just a savage, and then I go in there and I'll beat him. He's, seen it. He's playing the, you know, I got nothing to lose, I'm confident, I'll beat this guy card real strong. You know, and they say that somebody who doesn't have anything to lose can be very dangerous. Do you, when you watch his responses and knowing him the way you do, do you think that he really, truly thinks he's going to beat you on Saturday? I don't know. I, I think the truth is in a person's eyes. And if they're shifty, he doesn't believe it. So are his eyes shifting? They're shifting. His eyes are shifting, I'll tell you. He's like, yeah, I'm going to beat him. Their eyes are shifty. That's where the truth is. You can't lie there. But, yeah, he seems to be very confident. He probably, I mean, if he made me cry in 2004, you probably would imagine he thought he was going to beat me when we stepped on the mat in 2007. And I smashed him. So, in competition, you know, that's what I love to do. I love to compete. And I could lose to Pat. And then we won't do this anymore. I'll be on the prelims or something. Seriously. I could lose this fight. This is a fight. Anything can happen. I just feel confident in my, my preparation. I had 10 weeks. 
I was getting ready to fight a guy that's going into the Hall of Fame. You prepare thoroughly when you have some when you have somebody like that in front of you. So if I'm preparing for Rashad Evans, I should be ready for every other guy that's under him. That's how I feel. I'm confident, man. I don't I don't I don't think this guy can fight me. I've been doing this a long time. I've stood across the cage from some of the baddest men in the world. And I know what he's gonna be feeling right when he walks in because I felt it against Bigfoot Silva. When I got in there, I was like, man, is this really where I belong? Standing in there first. I'd never been first. They always would make me go to the cage second. I'm standing there first and out walks a giant. I'm like, is this really where I belong? And then we start fighting. And he didn't he didn't put me away fast enough. So I started going, maybe this is where I belong. You know, and then so if I do that with Pat, he'll start to gain confidence the longer he's in there. So he won't have a chance. I'm just going to go across the cage and I'm just going to beat him up. From the start to the finish. You remember thinking that during the big first fight, did. like cognitively, like I was like, I was like, I was there when he was coming in. I was like, man, is this? Is, I mean, I just fought Jeff Munson. I fought on Strike Force Challenges only seven months ago. I fought on the Challenger series, and, and I was like, man, is is this? I mean, I'm really fighting the guy that just beat Fedor. You know, he could really hurt me. And then I was like, it's the, as as the fight was going, I was like, wait a minute, you know, it's like something clicks. You're like, wait a minute, this guy hasn't got me out of here yet. I can keep going and going, and then eventually he's going. Same thing with Barnett. It's like initially you're like nervous and like, man, is this is this my level? And then you're like, this is my level, and I'm going to just keep going and going and going. How do you do the, the historical relevance of three Olympians fighting on, on this card? It's huge. The- it's huge for the sport of mixed martial arts to have people that have competed at the highest level of sports. I think Olympics is the pinnacle of all sports, and uh, – to have three Olympians on one card is, is huge. I also think it's, it's huge for wrestling because we got four rest, uh, uh, three wrestlers in the top four fights, uh, four people fighting on the card. So Pat, Sarah, and I are all wrestlers, and we're fighting in the co-main event and main event. I think it's huge for the Olympics and huge for wrestling in general. It's a, it's a big deal, man, especially with the Olympics going on right now. Do you see it kind of as a, as a shift in the, the sport of MMA to these high-level Olympic-type athletes making the move? Well, before you would get an NCAA champion or something. Now you're getting the cream of the crop Olympians, Olympic medalists with Sarah and Ronda. I mean, they take it to a level even higher. They made me go on a media tour with them in L.A. I'm sitting there with no medal. <laughs> hey, come on, man. Talk about just cutting me off at the knees, huh, guys? <laughs> Could you put your analyst hat on and talk about you know how, how Sarah's wrestling will play against Sarah's judo? Here's my disclaimer before I start this. I won't pick either one of them. They're both ridiculously tough. Sarah's a teammate of mine. Uh, and Rhonda, who messes with Rhonda and her mom? When her mom gets like that, poor Dave Camarillo. Did you see him try to break down her arm bar? Oh, my God, they smashed him. He's all apologizing. Then he has to, like, apologize afterwards. I'm like, God, Dave, you should just shut up. But anyway, I'm not picking against either one of them. But um, I think for the first time, when Rhonda gets into the cage, it's been since 2008. I, I mean, I, I don't, I'm don't. i pretty sure she feels people in the gym that are tough and strong. But since 2008, she's never grabbed someone and felt this person's on the same athletic level as me. This person's as strong as I am. This person has been competing as long as I have been. She said it best with Misha. She goes, I was on the Olympic team. You were wrestled in high school. Well, Sarah McMahon went to the Olympics too, and she won. She actually did better than all of us. And uh, so she's going to feel her and she's going to go, man, this is different because this girl has everything that I have. And I think it's going to make for a fun fight. So the wrestling versus judo, I mean, if, if, if I was going to pick a, a, a woman to go out and represent wrestling, I would pick Sarah McMahon. And if judo people would pick a person to go out and represent judo, they would pick Ronda Rousey. And if we, did, if we needed someone to go to the Olympics right now for those two sports as a female, we would still pick Sarah and Rhonda and say, guys, go out and represent our country. So we're getting the best of the best here. It's going to be fun. Thanks, DC. All right. Thank you.